All right, let's sit down in the film room with two former NFL offensive linemen, 16 years of experience between Jeremiah Searles and Alex Boone. I played football in eighth grade, so I have a lot of value to offer as well. And today, gentlemen, so we're kind of going through some of the top free agents, guys who could get franchised or will hit the market. And today we've landed on Kevin Dotson and even mm. more broadly, the Rams revamped running game. Yeah, the Rams. Finally. They had a, a weird down year. Not weird. I mean, they won a Super Bowl and then they went through transition. But they went from being one of the five worst running games in the NFL. They bring in Kevin Dotson, move him to right guard, revamp the scheme. And boom, one of the top 10 running attacks overnight, Sean McVay in the NFL. And so we'll look at we'll start with kind of Kevin Dotson and his impact. But obviously, if you guys see bigger things, then no, call the, it out. the other guy I want to highlight on that offensive line is rook, TCU rookie um, Steve Avia. The other uh, guard left guard, right? Second round pick. Thought he was a phenomenal. Played all three positions in college or center guards. And so when they picked him, I was like, that's a day one starter. Like far and away, I thought he was one of the better interior guys in all of the rookie class last year, and he played like it. Can so I? So you add two of those guards in there, and I mean, and Note Boom starting to figure it out a little bit more since Wentworth left. Like this really felt like this O line finally kind of came together as a unit for the first time since Wentworth left. And I love the fact that with these two mauling guards, like I look at this scheme as the old Saints, right? Like when they had Carl Nix and Jahari Evans, like they have two really, really big guards. I love the fact that they're running the fuck out of duo. I love the fact that they're like, hey, let's make this a ground and pound fest. We have two big guards that can move people out of here. Let's give the ball to uh, Williams. Let him fucking run the shit out of it. And at the same time, we're going to play action off of all of this. This is why this year they started to come out, was because this scheme has now helped them. There are a lot of play action more off of it. They become more dangerous off the run game. You have to honor it more. And you still have one of the toughest quarterbacks that can put the fucking ball anywhere. And Oh, wait. Yeah. Look at their receiving core. Puka Nakua, Cup. Like, dude, Dramatics. they... They're Those, fucking... like 17 and 18 on this team are big body players. Dude. Like Puka Nakua is a big, big. dude. Skronix, big dude. And so you when you have tight ends and uh that like Higby's not that big of a dude, but when you have receivers that are big like this that can block, you can get a lot done out of eleven personnel. Hell yeah. Yeah. So uh we'll look at these. We'll look at a handful of of just running plays here. And I went through with an eye on sixty nine Kevin Dotson. Mm -hmm. Fun to watch. But obviously you guys will see other things as we roll some of this tape. So a little Let's fly motion. Here. here we go. Duo. To what I say. Yep. So this is duo. Go back. Duo such a fun play. Yep, so this is duo. So this is idea. This is double teams across the board, right? That's the idea. Is you want double teams across the board. So 69 and 79 are going up to 44, right? Great job by Kevin. Stay uh, square. Staying square and Drive taking his ass. the penetrator. That's a pancake right Dude, go there. back. He go fucking up. launches that dude across the fucking this dude. <laughs> awesome. Right? If, you if you catch a, if you got a guy slanting and you catch him in the slant, he's toast. <laughs> it's over. If you're going forward and he's going laterally, dump him. Oh, dump him right into the fucking next linebacker go, i love what did it, i just dude. say about 17 what did i just say about the rookie puka nakua Beast. sets the receiving record but you're asking him to fold inside here right this is a fold scheme between the tight end and 17 so 89 is going to pin out 17 is going to insert inside whack clears it right? out does a that. great job just clearing that dude out and williams has got such good vision and feel and patience for this play but yeah that's all because they sent pressure off that side and slanted and they caught him in movement you beat movement with speed to the point of attack <sighs> I know. Love it. All right, here's our here's our main character here, and then you guys tell me what else you see on these plays. They love this bunch formation. Watch this. Boom. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he fucks up this. Hey, go back. I was watching this play last night. Check First it out. First of all, Pause. you should never get there. I like was the just going to say he's this. He's already out leveraged. See how the linebacker's over there? Pause it. You are he's already in the next gap over. There the chances you're of about, you you're this guy. Yes. Yeah, yes. You're going. being to a linebacker across the ball. The chances of you getting to him should be zero. Zero percent. This guy should make this tackle. But what happens is he takes such a great angle and he doesn't fuck with this guy. He just goes, you know what? His momentum's taking him this way. I'm gonna send him that way. Which is a great decision because it ends up fucking pancaking the living shit out of him. Watch this. Yum! Fuck out of here. <laughs> Look at him like now, nah, little boy. Stay down. Dude, he is massive and runs so well. This is, is why it, the is mid zone deal? is so good. He was he played pretty exclusively left guard for three years with the Steelers. And the the Rams said, Hi, we're we're the Rams. I'm Sean. 
we'd like you to play right guard and come in here and help us revamp the scheme here. Is that a big move after three years playing exclusively left guard? I mean, you guys have played no. all over the place in your career. And I'm a, I, I watched an interview with him earlier this year, and they were talking to him about it, and he was saying that he was happy to be moved back to the right because in college he played right. So he wasn't naturally a left. And so now he's like, I'm back to the right side where I feel very comfortable, which to me is normal. If you've played right, right in college, you're going to want to play right in the pros. And now all of a sudden it's like, yeah, we may have missed the boat on this guy. He may have been a right guard all along. Well, it also Steve Avia, I believe, is left-handed and naturally plays left. So it worked out really well um, yeah. when they brought in him. And they were like, hey, you want to play left? Absolutely. You want to play right? Great. Sweet. Let's roll. Is Warfish. this another one where a, where a defensive lineman is shooting a gap here and you're just ushering him out of the way? Yeah, the Colts are um, notorious for movement. Like, they're a big movement front, right? So, like, they want to try and move and create gaps. So he's trying to attack the A gap. And you see it's because they bring in 44 on a pressure look here. Okay. Right? So if you look, go back to the start, this is just a single oh, – where are we at? So this is just a Sam pressure, right? So 44 is the Sam linebacker here, the strong side linebacker. 45 is your Mike. And so what's happening here – or he might be the Mike. I'm not sure what the formation truly is. All right, but this is the same play they ran earlier, right? This is the exact same play of the first clip you've shown us because you know I can tell because they're fold scheming 17 around inside for 23 again. Okay. Right? So the idea here is it's a double team on the right between – Dotson and uh, who is that? Uh, Havenstein. Havenstein, big old dude from Wisconsin, right? So double team to 44, double team to 45, backside tackle, you're one on one with 54, tight end and the receiver, you sort this out how you want to get here. They're just running a, a pressure. 44 is just running through the B gap. And the only way this works is if Dotson can clear this out and the tackle stays square. Yep. Watch okay. Havenstein how square he stays. So here, the, right? first, the, first, the first part of this is. Double move team to 96. Move and, the down, put him in the linebacker's lap. Yeah, we right? call this That's a what doom. you're taught. A Take doom. it right to him. Right? And so as soon as he disappears, so many times you see tackles chase the hip and just yeah. bury themselves in here and allow 44 to scream through this gap. He does a great job of staying square. Right? He doesn't chase the hip, stays on his track. Right there. Bang. Runs Sets right the in. defense. See how he cuts the defense cuts right the there? defense right there. It's beautiful. Yep. That's you a can only do that staying job. square. Yeah, if you, if you were to turn in there, you're, you're toast. But it's a great job of catching the penetrator and staying square by Havenstein. So here we go again. We'll start We'll start with our big eye on big fella. Kevin Dotson. Hey, now, big fella. Whoop! Bang. Mm. Great redirect. Great redirect. This is a single, right? They're running a single, so this is a zone. So the way we identify um, combos on the front side of zones, triples between the tackle and the tight end. Doubles between the guard and the tackle, and a singles the center and the guard working together. So they're working a single up here to number seven, right? And they're working a B on the backside to number 10, right? So that's what you look at. And the tight end has sift rules. You protect inside out. And so they're running a single here. So he's just protecting, holding space for his guard, his center to be able to get there, right? This two eye, boom, turn him, right? Turn the, the idea is you want to turn the shoulders of the defender so that your center can overtake. And then you just want to climb up to this linebacker and take him where he wants to go. Right, so many guys, especially young players, think I got to kill this guy. Right, and seven makes a terrible run fit. Terrible. Yeah. He's getting yeah. cussed out in the meeting room. Like, <laughs> oh, no, he is. Yeah, seven's going. Where are you going, dude? Like, your job is the B gap. You have the B gap, and you stick your head in the A. You're toast. He's you're screwed toast. in the B gap too, though, right? I mean, Kevin Dotson's just waiting for him. He's waiting for way, him, but right? you're, the jobs you you got to stop. You got to be gap integrity, right? You got to try and fight him back to ten here. Who's going to try and beat the cutback? All that, but he sticks his head in the A-gap. It's a great job by Williams pressing the hole. But Dotson does a great job. Like you said, he's square. He's staying on his track, and he's just taking whatever comes to him. By the way, they ran, They had a, They had like five games of either close to or over 200 yards rushing this season. Just it was amazing when, Kieran, when Williams went out, their rushing game really struggled. And when he yep. came back at the end of the year, man, they went on a big run. Go back. Go back. Hook. Do you see that jump reach? Do you see how fucking smooth that is? We call this a jump reach, and you're jumping outside to reach the shit out of him right now. And it's a very risky move, but at times when you're smart enough and you're a vet, this is one of the best moves because it just allows you to attack him without really being physical, and it just fucks him up because he has to keep gap integrity. And the minute you reach him this fast, there's Look nothing he can do. Look at that. There's nothing he can do. And so now the ball is definitely going outside. Like We're like, <laughs> yep, we got the three. We've cut the defense. We're gone. So he's lined up. The, the defensive players lined up, of a, a basically a gap over, right? I mean, I mean he's, I a he's a true three technique. He's a true three technique. Foot when his foots on foot to foot. When his hands on his foot, or you call it foot to foot. His outside foots on his inside foots on your outside foot. 
Yeah. That's a true three technique. But what screws this dude up is for so long, they're used to when you get reached, guys coming at you, right? Going right. forward. When all of a sudden you're an O-lineman and you lose ground, they kind of panic a little bit. Like, oh, shoot, I'm not hitting anything. And so he's moving vertically and you're going around him. Right? That's why it's a great change up for these things to lose a little bit of ground because now it's like, oh, shoot, now I just got to continue to fight to try and get over the top. Then he and carries him 10 yards carries down, him right? down the field. And he makes the play, but it's like, congratulations, you made the play for a 10 yard grain. Got the tackle. Like, he got the stat. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> like, that's stat. a great he got that way. Stat. He he got, but he got some nice statistics. <laughs> uh, there we go. I'm going to guess, my... guess he's pulling. I kind of feel like this is a pull play by him. Nope, I lied. Here's a double. Double. Look at All that. Right. So Fucking reach. Let's see you make the play there. 93. This is. So he's clinic. reaching He's reaching this dude right here. So they're right? running yeah. a double, right? So center's on his own. They're doubling. 70 and 69 are doubling to seven. What you're looking at here is a guard, and we had this conversation with our rookies. You're watching the near defender's near knee. Right, so right here, if I'm doubling it, I'm looking at this dude's near knee because what? my his head, this knee right here, yep, right there, yep. because his head and his shoulders can lie to me. His they can lie and tell me where he's actually going. That near knee will never lie to me. It's either going to go at me vertically up the field or outside, and that will depend what I do. So right here, near knees, it's right there. It's vertically to me. That means I'm overtaking. Right, I'm overtaking this dude. This is a great job by Roseboom of, or not, excuse me, of uh, Havenstein, turning him. And you know, right here, there's a lot of color in there. That near knee's there. I'm overtaking, putting my hat to his outside peck and driving this vertically as he's climbing vertically to the linebacker. So 70's job, just from an idiot fan perspective, 70's job is to just turn this dude's shoulders enough so that Dotson 69 can get around him. Yep. And Look then seven, you. and then seventy climbs up to wash out or to. You're a beast, I guess, Mac. Well, you're you're learning, that's Mac. That's you're a double. Learning. That's a double. That's great. The most important thing you said, you got to turn the shoulders. When you turn his shoulders, it allows us to reach him. If you don't turn his shoulders, that reach Just becomes there. so hard. Boom. See how now all of a sudden it's completely locked in. And then running back kind of reads what the tight end's doing and which 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 way to go there. Is yep. he always cutting inside? No, no he's just reading. It. If that if that if that defensive end wants to like or the guy that 89's kicking out here, Higby, if this guy wants to peek his head inside, then he takes it outside. But with here, you can see like that guy's the edge setter. Like, he knows he has to set the edge. So right there, he's setting the edge. He peeks back outside. He takes one step and then cuts it up. By the it's way, Kevin Dotson job. is about to make seventeen million dollars a year for some of this stuff, like the, for the sure. reach blocks oh, yeah. and just everything. Yeah, I mean, and he's you young, know, very you young. Off, you come off a year like this, you're getting paid. Yeah. Hey, I know I know Booney's got to get going here. Can we do one more? Let's just carpool, do, uh, let's baby. See, let's see what the next carpool. One is. Let's go. Let's see what we got. This is the Commanders here. Let's Ooh. just see what we got. Come on, where this came That's from. pain in the middle there too. That's a big fella. Big fella. Boop. Oh, oh, pin, oh a little pinball. I love this. This is just great awareness. This is just fantastic football awareness, right? So you know that you have to get to 57, right? 57's your guy. You're on an A to 57. You're initially working with the center, right? Like I, in this is because he's all the way over here. When he steps down to block 94, he feels color go away, right? He feels color go away. He doesn't panic. He doesn't think like right here. He says, okay, my guy is going away. I see it. Put the brakes on. Stop the penetrator. Bang. Stop the penetrator. Then climb. So he's so he's initially not responsible for no. fifty five on this play. No, but he knows that if he stops and hits him, it'll help the tackle drive him off the ball more. Like you're yep. trying to split the defense. You realize that the nose cross face, so your A is worthless, and now the defensive end is coming in. We need you to cut the defense here. And he does a great job of it. He's, he stops the color, and he gets up on Barton, which allows the running back to press up here and then cut outside. This is A lot of this is because of what he did. Because if not, that defensive end is spiking inside and forcing that cut way faster. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Yeah, we got it. He's going to get gotta paid. Wrap this one, but man, He's going to get paid. I could show you 10 more plays like that, too. Yeah. Oh, he had a great year. And the Rams. And just yeah, everything. he did a phenomenal year. The Rams' run game was phenomenal. I think they're going to be back next year with a vengeance, too. I think they've got a lot of pieces back. If we at some point we're going to do like a sneaky under the radar Super Bowl contender episode of the podcast, I think you put the Rams back on that list. I mean, the Texans are probably going to be on people's oh, list, yeah. but for sure, interesting man. So hey, if you enjoyed this breakdown, click the like button and the subscribe button on the O line committee YouTube channel for Booney for Jay. I'm Phil. We'll see you for the next film review. See you guys.